Hi friends, Kim from Stamping Imperfection. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm here with Scrapbook Pail and I've got lots of goodies to play with today. I've got some new gems from Pink Fresh. These are the Glacier Gems and they're kind of white and iridescent, very iridescent, very pretty. I've got the Colorado Craft Company Gnome Home Stamp and Die Set, which I'm very excited to play with. I love gnomes and I love gnome homes, so this one is very cute. And I'm going to make two cards with that today. I, I did go ahead and grab some background builder stan stencils. This is from Pink Fresh, and that's the Slimline Cloud Builder stencil. The Honeybee Stamps stencil that I have here. This is a two-layer stencil set. It is a hill and grass builder stencil set. And I'm pretty excited about this. You can use the hill parts or the grassy hill parts or you can use them both together. Um, and I like that they have a variety of hills there. I also have the Hero Arts Woodland Forest stencil, and I'm excited about that one in particular with that gnome home. I think that will be really fun. And uh, I got some these really pretty green gems. These are called Emerald City. I, I did tuck a little sleeping mouse stamp and die set from Colorado Craft Company into my cart uh, just for fun. I won't be using that today, but I will be playing with that later. I also decided I needed a few more blender brushes, so I, I'm going to try out these Honeybee Stamps background blender brushes. So I got a set of two, and I like the large ones for my backgrounds and I definitely wanted to try out one of these. So I'm gonna play with those today. And I'm gonna start by making my backgrounds. So I pulled out the Hero Arts Woodland Forest stencil. I put a little bit of adhesive on the back of my paper. I've got this yellow tape I'm gonna use. Um, I love this yellow tape. And I kind of put it on the top of my stencil like a hinge. So my stuff is held in place really well there. I did pull out some Catherine Pooler inks. I love the Catherine Pooler inks and having the little minis available, that means I can have a nice collection of her colors as well. So I have I pulled out a lot of those. I did pull out a couple of the larger inks um, that I have from, I have some of her neutrals. And I'm starting out with my the lightest of the the browns this is called sandcastle and if you don't have these definitely pull out your distress oxides because they blend just as beautifully as we know as the Catherine Pooler inks do so I'm using one of those I'm using one of those honeybee blender brushes and I quite like that the brush it actually really blends beautifully and I'm getting nice coverage. I'm trying to do a really light coat of this lighter color because I want to add I want to add some depth to my stencil. So I'm going to add some of the darker ink, the little icing on the cake ink, and I want to add it to just one side. Like that looks very nice. I could leave that like that and it would be a nice subtle background. But I kind of want to play around with getting a little bit more dimension um, from my background so I'm trying to add some of this uh, darker brown ink the icing on the cake ink to just the left hand side and the base of the trees and I'm pretty successful um, they are really close together so I'm being as careful as I can I really just want some color variation look flat like I colored in a stencil I want it to have a little bit more variation in color to add a little bit of depth to to the piece. Now, there are a lot of little bits in there, um, like there are stones, there are grass bits. So I pulled, pulled out these Fantastics blender sticks that I have. Um, you can use them, you can wet them and add the ink. You can use them dry like I'm using here. They worked really well for the little spots. You could use a Q-tip but I really wanted to try these. For some reason, I decided to purchase those a while ago and I decided I needed to use them. So I did fill in the background of the grass, grassy parts with a little bit of ink and I also added a little bit of a light blue um, 
to between the trees. I was trying not to go over the trees too much because I didn't want to lose the dimension that I had and I just wanted to add a little bit of blue to the background and I was really happy with it. So of course since I had the grass stencil I had to pull out a um, another green. So I used um, eucalyptus for the original stuff that I did and I just wanted to add a little bit of grassy detail with that stencil to the base of each tree so I pulled out lime ricky which is slightly more of a yellow green to get a little bit of detail. I am just experimenting with these goodies and having a lot of fun. So I put that background aside and decided to make a second one that has lots of grassy hills. So I'm using the eucalyptus ink and you can see every time I add a new hill I turn to a different, different um, edge of the stencil. I want a variety of those hills there and I'm going to use a combination of eucalyptus and the lime ricky and i'm just filling in my hills you keep adding hills till you're happy with it um, if you just want a couple i tend to always like a lot of hills the same with my clouds i like a lot of clouds i love this uh, cloud builder stencil and um, i'm adding a little bit of blue here i believe that this is it's a boy and then i'm flipping to a different part of the stencil and I'm pulling out a little bit of uh, light lavender this I think this is sweet 16 and adding that and then I'm gonna add one more color because I feel like it needs a little bit of pink and again I moved to a different part of the stencil now if you flip the stencil over to the um, back side you want to make sure you clean it off first so you don't transfer any ink that you already have on there to your card so that completes that background. Now I went ahead and I um, stamped a, two of these gnome homes and I did stamp one of the gnomes and one of the little cat gnomes and I went ahead and colored them all in. Like everything I stamped, I colored them in. I used my Catherine Pooler ink and you do need to give that Midnight Black ink a little time to dry before you go uh, ahead and color in with your Copics um, because it does smear occasionally. Now when I use the dye to cut out the gnome home it cut out the um, windows so I wanted to add some color back in and I decided to use some vellum to back the windows and I wanted to see if I wanted it plain or blue or yellow I wanted it yellow. I love that yellow glow coming through the windows so I just added the vellum with a little bit of the liquid glue I love those glue tubes. So my card bases were trimmed to four by five and a quarter and added with foam tape to my card bases, four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. And I put foam on the back of those panels. You can see I also added liquid glue to the foam. That gives me some wiggle room time, which I need. I wanna make sure I'm getting my card um, front straight on that card base. So I did go ahead and put some of those gems down and you can see how fabulous those green ones look. The white ones are on the right hand card, the forest card, and they kind of blend in. You can see them really well close up. I did also add my sentiment. I stamped the sentiments directly to the card front and um, one final detail that I added here, I wanted some sparkles. So I pulled out one of my Aqua Shimmer pens. This is one of the, the glitter sparkle ones. And I'm covering the entire gnome home with this really pretty glitter shimmer pen. And this is one of the Nouveau shimmer pens and I love these. N and gnomes are magical. They should definitely have sparkle. So I added sparkle to their homes because in the middle of the woods or in the middle of a grassy field, um, I think they would sparkle no matter where they are. And you can see that fabulous sparkle when I tip that card. Now, I always tip the card a couple different ways when I'm doing this because I want to make sure that I've covered the whole gnome home. So I'm adding that. And this one I did in pink and purple and green. I just for a playful look. I did add some white gel pen details before I added the shimmer. I let that dry before I um, die cut them out and 
I will let this dry before I do anything more. So I've got lots of shine and sparkle on there and I love those. I love the little scenes. The, the stencil backgrounds make it so easy and this stamp set is adorable. So I'm gonna have links to everything below that you saw me use here today. And we would love it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to get notifications every time we upload a new video.